But um, where was I going with that? I think you were going more of a... Uh, I don't know. I was looking at you. You looked really cute, so I just kind of like zoned out. You, um... What is that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you are here with Dan and Kim, AKA the realist Nemo Fearless. And uh, we're coming at you from our tent. Uh, we live in a canvas tent um, in Northeast Maine. Um, if you saw my first video, I kind of touched on that a bit. Um, we wanted to start this channel to kind of um, connect with people and encourage people who are out there who are thinking that the traditional life may or may not really be for them. So we wanted to encourage people who are a little bit more unlikely to be out here whenever I'd see people in nature and uh, off-grid people they always seemed a little rugged and fit and you know maybe vegan and you know, things of that like I don't want to necessarily stereotype you know yeah I want the tofu spring rolls except I don't eat tofu so do you have like a tofu flavored chicken you can substitute in for me um that's more what I pictured and so we are clearly not that. Uh, we're we're from a big city and we always loved nature and we were always escaping to go camping and kind of get away. And so um, when we came out here, it was more just kind of figuring out what we needed. Yeah, I think it was a nice break that we needed from just living in a city and the traffic and, and having just the constant noise around us. And we, we really just wanted to live more uh, in the in the in the wild or or live more with animals and less with people and then not necessarily be in the middle of nowhere you know hundreds and hundreds of miles away from everything but but still have a little peace and quiet and uh, and let our dogs not have to have a fenced yard um, and just just be able to relax a little bit and not stress about the things uh, you do when you uh, live in the city um, one of the things when we first moved out here we had an idea of what we needed to uh, kind of live. And it was so far compiled on top of the basic human needs. Like now my understanding of what a basic human needs is food, water, and shelter. And when we came out here, we were still kind of debating, you know, having, buying a traditional home and, you know, maybe just kind of having some land. And um, what I found is we were very critical. Like we go into a house and it had one bathroom. We're like, ugh. Or, you know, it was missing, it didn't have the right floor plan or layout. And we weren't really um, looking for a home that would fit our lives. We were, we realized we were really just looking for another traditional home and we were going to end up fitting our lives around it. Um, and this channel is not about encouraging people to fit in a mold. It's about creating a mold. One of the things that we uh, looked at we for a temporary house is uh, we looked at yurts, which ultimately ended up being a little more expensive. Um, we looked at the tiny homes and people living in sheds and different things like that. Um, and a lot of those were, uh, you know, within reason, but um, like the sheds and the tiny homes, so we really didn't want to make a payment and that's not what we wanted long-term. We ultimately ended up um, in a canvas tent, uh, just like a typical hunting tent. Um, 250 square feet. And so I am uh, used to living in a, about a 1500 square foot space. And so the downsizing was definitely kind of a challenge for me it was, I saw the documentary minimalism and I'll put that information down in the description. I really recommend anybody, um, whether you're considering a life like this or not, um, to, if you have not seen that documentary, definitely check it out. But, um, figuring out what to put in this space was, uh, definitely quite the challenge. We're sitting on a, uh, a bean bag, large bean bag, I'd say like, you know, seven by five feet, um, bean bag. And, um, I'm a person who instinctively loves to debate, but I probably would not go in a debate with you about the necessity of having a bean bag in such a small space. But part of it, you want to have the food, water, shelter aspect of it, but also part of it is what you enjoy and peace of mind. Um, we have definitely embraced, uh, the ideas of, uh, having a yuga lifestyle. Tell me what is Huga? Hygge is being consciously cozy. 
but it has also been described as uh, the art of creating a nice atmosphere. It's been called uh, the pursuit of everyday happiness. It's also been called socializing for introverts. Okay. But it's about being together with the people you love. It's about relaxation. It's about indulgence. It's about good food. It's about gratitude. It's about equality. All those things mixed together is hygge. And so you can argue if the beanbag was essential, but I think for uh, from a mental um, state of mind, yes, it was. And we get a lot, we use it for a lot of things, like our beanbag doubles as a workshop area, a music studio, a uh, place to take a nap with uh, Thor, and so, or any of the dogs, but Thor is a uh, napaholic. Right he'll, he'll get sure you. He'll get you. That's Thor. <laughs> you won't intend on taking a nap, and he comes up, and Sorry, he's he, he just he he'll literally he'll spoon you into unconsciousness. Um, I can probably think of about a hundred other uses for this space, but none as um, mentally um, satisfying as you know choosing this one. So I think it just made it comfortable for us. Like it's we we. Uh, and we we had some a lot of disagreements on what we truly needed in here and it wasn't even like hardcore camping stuff or things like that it was more just figuring out what we what we really wanted in here and um so right now you know we have a, a big dresser in here for kim's stuff and uh and, I, and we did have a dresser for me uh originally and uh and we just realized that i could just put a couple of uh, plastic bins from walmart underneath my uh underneath the bed and it worked just as well and then we have my dresser is actually out in uh, our little uh tent um shelter that we we refer to as a garage but it's just another tent we had the the uh, tent we had it on a different part of our property originally we've been in this tent for about six months now and um, we had it over there we had the beanbag on the ground and we were constantly worried about is it getting wet is there water because even though we're in a tent and we stay warm and we stay dry and somewhat debatably clean we are still very much exposed to the outside elements i stay clean <laughs> So Dan built a really cool, uh, just natural rustic frame, and we had a pallet under it always. But the pallet, the bean bag, would kind of slope around the pallet, and and you you could feel the pallet, like the block of it, you know, sticking up through when you're just trying to hang out and relax, and you were constantly fluffing it back up, and so that wasn't very pleasant. And so you know, just a couple of pieces of wood, and you know, a few a hour or two of uh, his time. I was gonna say our time, but. His she wasn't time. here when I built it. <laughs> she went to the library in town, and I uh, we we ended up going to the the lumber yard here. the The mill is uh, like two three miles from here, and um, we uh, we ended up getting uh, this huge bundle of of cedar slabs. So I just took a whole bunch of those pieces. You can get them very very inexpensive. It's uh, I think it's twenty or thirty dollars or something like that for a huge bundle um i don't know they're they're eight feet long and stuff like that so so i built it with that real quick um and the nice thing is too since it's cedar it actually smells really nice in here and ultimately what we decided is we're going to build an earthship home out of tires uh somewhat because of the cost and also because of the uh, the benefit for uh for us to be able to live um in a mortgage-free home and also just to have a house that we built um ourselves and so basically it'll take us a year or two to build it but mostly people take 30 years to pay off a mortgage and we'll have a home in a year or two so it, it ultimately yeah it'll be a little more hard work and stuff like that but i might have 28 29 years of free time that i wouldn't have had had we just uh you know kept our jobs and so forth and, and continue with that lifestyle and so i'd recommend you know figuring out how much time and effort you really want to put towards this um when deciding if it's if it's for you but if you're somebody like us who likes being on your own time it's 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 amazing penis right. penis <laughs> i'm not gonna edit that out um, all right you're Testing. in our you're in our uh, bedroom area where the magic happens. Anyway, so this is the bedroom area and um, we have a full-size bed. We share it with some very fairly large paws. And I don't know if you've noticed about us, we have a little bit more girth. Uh, we're not the smallest people in the world. And so when we get our, our 
earth ship home a king size bed is definitely the route we kind of want to go um, we did add a one and a half inch uh, memory foam topper for added comfort and uh, several dogs. One of the things that uh, we looked at and one of the things I was concerned about when we moved out here was keeping Kim and our two smaller dogs warm and comfortable. Um, I didn't know how she did grow up in the city and I wasn't sure how adaptable she would be to um, you know, sleeping on a, a, a little uh, camping pad or something like that and uh, or in a cot or, or something of that nature. So uh, one of the things, because we knew we would be doing this for a little while, we didn't know it'd be this long, um, but we uh, we knew it would be a minimum of six to 12 months and <laughs> probably be about double or triple that. But but nonetheless, <laughs> um, so uh, we but we wanted to be able to sleep. Um, normal and also just stay warm and uh, if any of you have been camping uh, you know that the if you can keep yourself off the ground and have a, a, a thicker amount of insulation between you and the ground it keeps you warmer and more comfortable um, even when it's uh, 10 or 20 below outside um, because of the uh, additional uh, insulation of it and the way we've uh, like you can see behind us there's a this is a zero degree sleeping bag that's uh, about a million years old um, and uh, but we hung it there and it, it does keep out the draft from uh, from this side of the room and there's another sleeping bag over here to keep this area a little warmer um, and then also uh, one of the I guess I don't know if it's a problem but um, we do have three dogs a Chihuahua a Bulldog mix and a St. Bernard and uh, sometimes they share the bed well and sometimes they don't um, so it's kind of a little uh, give and take with that but we want them to also feel um safe and welcome here too because they're living in this tent they don't have a thousand square foot house to go relax on the dog bed somewhere that it's so we try to have a little more sense of humor about that instead of telling our 150 pound saint bernard move all the time we kind of move around her and, and make it work so it's a little more friendly environment for uh, for all five of us all right so now you are over in our kitchen area um this is probably mine and the dog's favorite area where the food is um, it functions very much like a normal kitchen. Uh, we have a uh, camp kitchen from Cabela's. Uh, I'm gonna say it was about 140, 150 bucks. Deluxe camp kitchen. Yeah, a deluxe camp kitchen. Thank you, Dan. Amazing. You have um, two storage containers. Um, one here and one over here on this side, which I have unzipped. I don't know. Maybe I was stealing cookies out of there a minute ago. But um, I have about 40 cans at the bottom of this one and it still holds strong. Nothing's collapsing, nothing's falling in. Uh, we have pots and pans hanging, uh, my measuring cup. I actually get to bake a lot. One of the things I absolutely love, Camp Chef oven. You have two burners and an actual oven. You know, cooking is a passion of mine. It's, it's a hobby. It's a beneficial hobby. Also, which I'm really excited about it, I'm able to cook for my dogs. Now, we do keep kibble down. Uh, we have a little dog feeding station set up here. We always have kibble down, but because I cook, they mostly get uh, a mixture of a meat, whether it's ground turkey or chicken. Sometimes if I make like a big piece of meat, like slow cook it, I'll make sure they get a lot of the trimming and pieces for that because it's just, you know, kind of Dan and I. So um, occasionally they'll get like beef, which they're always really excited about it. But most of the time it's ground turkey or ground chicken, brown rice and some type of vegetable like green beans or sweet potato. And it's made them a little spoiled. And so when it uh, comes to kibble, it's definitely like you can tell they're settling and that's fine. Um, my St. Bernard will come over here to our fridge. We have a uh, fridge, uh, a cooler, a really nice cooler that we got from Walmart. It's an Ozark Trail. I'm used to having a refrigerator, and so I can't tell you how many times I went to the store and just not being conscious about the space that we actually have now, and I've gotten uh, more food than we needed. And so I don't know if you noticed, that was a little red cooler on top, and that's more for Kim's overflow of uh, food or if we just need to set something out. A lot of times it's cold, and we don't want to encourage animals to come, but we'll set something outside and it'll just freeze uh, we have a little container outside of where we can sit and say we're not perfect we make mistake after mistake but we're learning and we're constantly reshaping like I say reshape making your own mold not following anyone else's uh, for dishes I have a 
little bowl down here. I think we have a dirty dish in it. But um, I fill this with water. I, I'll go over water in a second of how we get our water, but I fill actually a pot with water, heat it up. Whether uh, if we have the wood stove going, I'll use that just to try to conserve the energy. Um, but a lot of times I'm lazy and I just come over and turn on our uh, stove. It runs on propane. Um, and so I think we have a 20 pound propane tank hooked to it, which lasts about a month actually. So that's been really, really good. Um, but I fill this up with water, you know, whatever soap I use. Um, I use Dawn, but Dan and I are considering switching to just biodegradable uh, soap. He already uses biodegradable soap for his body. And I'm getting there. Like I say, I'm kind of girly. If you look over at my other channel, you'll see I'm a lot more foofy uh, than a lot of uh, your idea of what you think of a girl out in nature. And so I'm getting there. But we are planning to switch over to um, to more of a biodegradable dish soap. Um, I put all the dishes in here and I use this as for rinsing. Dry them, put them away, ready for the next meal. We're good to go. So here is our... Uh fireplace area our wood stove um, this wood stove came with the uh, the tent it's a camp chef wood stove and uh, again your typical uh, cylinder uh, steel stove and um, and this is how we've stored the wood um, you can see I actually made some uh, very uh, rustic looking uh, shelves and the reason for that was to get more wood in here for the winter time but also we got wood from a few different places Fox. <laughs> yeah me <laughs> so I cut some um, dead uh, trees down here um, for the wood and so that's where you get a lot of this from like uh, stuff like this but we also ended up buying um, quite a bit of wood we're able to buy I think it was about three cords of wood for $200 um, which if anyone knows that's about a third of the price um, actually I think we got a little cheaper than that but the downside was is that it was not seasoned or dried yet um, for those of you who uh, use wood stoves, you already know you want uh, wood that's been um, drying for about a year before you burn it. Um, and so some of ours is and some of ours isn't. So that's why we have all of the uh, wood storage in here as well. So um, we also have um, different types of wood. So I categorize it to help uh, Kim and I figure out what we wanted. So this is um, some cedar. We got two huge cedar logs from uh, uh, one of our really nice neighbors up here. And uh, so what I did is I cut this into little pieces because it works very good for kindling. So it's really dry and light and burns super fast. So we use the, uh, the cedar as kindling. And then we have a lot of other pieces from the uh, lumber yard that we use uh, to get the fire going. And then, uh, and then everything else. Um, we also but to dry the boots that we've been using that day. Uh, so we hang it up. We have little clotheslines up here and stuff that we can uh, dry the things and even our uh, dogs jackets and so forth. So we, we, we do use the area uh, as, as best we can. But we also, we tried, um, this gets very hot over here. And one thing we noticed is that this part of the tent obviously gets hot because of the, um, the heater here. And so we tried a few things. We put this uh, thermal blanket behind it um, that's supposed to reflect the uh, heat back. And it does a pretty good job. It's a, it's a nicer than average uh, um, emergency blanket. It's a little bit thicker. Um, but it did, it did a so-so job. So the next thing we tried was a fan. And we had a, a powerful fan here. It's a, it's a little but powerful fan, which worked really well. And so what we would do is we would put this fan. Excuse me somewhere back here like this and then it would push the air um, through the rest of the tent and circulate it and then it would keep where the uh, the living area is much uh, more comfortable and uh, in this part of the tent less uh, hot um, so it just made balances that a little bit, bit more and then we found um, these online and uh, this one we bought at Walmart and uh, so what this is is you can actually set it on there and then it's heat activated so it will uh, start turning once the stove gets hot enough and blow the air once the stove gets cool enough then it turns off um, we didn't have really good luck with this this is our second one um, like i said we ordered it from walmart uh, one of their companies that they work with and um, th the first one broke uh, about a, a month after we had it 
Um, uh, Walmart told me to get a hold of them directly. They were super nice. They sent us a brand new one. Um, and then uh, that one broke as well about three weeks after we had that one. So this one also is broken. And then they, they sent us a refund. So we don't really have any complaints about it. We, we do wish the product would have been better because we would have liked to have kept the product instead of having the refund. But the company itself took very good care of us. So we can't really complain about that. But it would have been nice just to have the fan because it did actually blow uh, air throughout here and, and, and keep uh, this area less hot and that area much more comfortable. All right, so you're over here at our water and indoor kind of gardening station. Um, I have not uh, really shied away from the fact that um, we are 420 friendly. Um, I try not to, for the sake of the channel, if a lot of people that's not your thing, I won't throw it in your face, but I don't really see the point in hiding it either. Um, over here we have plants in the spring I plan to grow outdoors not just the 420 but uh, fruits and vegetables as well this land actually is um, just brimming with uh, all kinds of great things we uh, when we moved out here I was walking the dogs one day and along the road I was like those are strawberries and so I was really that was really excited about that so we had a few strawberries and then the next thing you know we're walking along a different day and I'm looking in the bushes and I'm like so those they look a lot like raspberries and sure enough they were and then a few weeks later blackberries came out and rose hips and just really really great stuff this uh, we were told from the guy we bought this land for that years ago this was an apple orchard um, we do have a few apple trees around as well and so this land has been very giving already and we just plan to add more to it add more fruits and vegetables in the spring if you are on the fence about cannabis I encourage you to educate yourself and just try to maybe not be so judgmental of others if it's something they're considered it may not be your thing but it's definitely a direction our country is headed and I am super glad about that there but uh, yeah this is our just another storage space for mostly water plants and then we have a uh, grow light it's 45 watt these are still babies uh coming in pretty slow uh 45 watt obviously you know if i had 100 or 1000 watt you could definitely work with that i do know how to grow but these plants are very exposed to the elements uh the moisture the uh lighting the change of temperature so it's not an ideal grow space um i know i probably have a lot of 420 enthusiasts out there like what is that what are you doing um given the right money to put into it and you know I would definitely invest in some better um, equipment but this is what we have and this is what we get and it works I do get you know cannabis off of it and as we grow and add on things we will build up that system and so you'll we'll have better uh, product as well and I'm I'm definitely more into outgrowing uh, growing outdoors and so that's something I'll be sharing with you in the coming months once it warms up a bit uh, we have a few more bits of storage over here um, stuff for the plants stuff for the dogs there's medicine in here uh, the dog Dogs also have CBD as well. Um, our water bottles, we have, um, what is it, six? I believe they're six gallon. I think I posted a picture on social media saying they were five gallon not too long ago, but I think they're six gallon water jug. In our small town, there is a natural spring. Um, if you don't know what a natural spring is, I'll insert the information um, here. So we go to the natural spring and uh, fill up our water bottles and they last about a week, sometimes a little shorter if I'm doing a little extra cooking and doing a little more dishwashing um, than I uh, normally would. But it usually lasts about five days to a week, depending on how well we conserve and it. Some weeks were better than others. These are our uh, baby wipes. We also bathe. Um, and if you're curious about that, we can uh, give information about how we We'll take actual baths with water in the warmer months we just uh, kind of shower outside but we had to get a bit more creative for the winter uh, the baby wipes also are great too um, and so that is uh, if you have questions about that we're happy to answer all right I'm uh, just just want to show you our electrical system and I'll kind of very quickly give you the progression of what we uh, did here so um, originally we started out uh, in the tent 
um, charging our batteries, our, our phone batteries, with uh, just some uh, temporary ones like this that we had, uh, typical ones you see people that travel, that's why we had them. Um, so we use these and then we try to charge them in the car and so forth. Um, the first thing we did is we went and bought uh, this battery right here. It's just a, a, a deep cycle battery like for a trolling motor. And, uh, and then we bought um, an inverter right here as well. So these two items were the first purchase that we made. And, and again, this, um, they're, they're both just from a local store here. And um, what we were looking for is just something again that we could charge our, uh, our phones with. And that was about it. And maybe sometimes run the computer or a vacuum or something like that. So we just needed a little bit of power. Um, but then we didn't have anywhere to charge it. So we go to the local uh, um, auto shop or the local marine shop here and they would charge it for us and charge us three, four dollars a charge. And about once a week or so, we would have to charge the battery. Um, and that worked for, for the beginning, but um, ultimately it wasn't real functional long term. So our next thing, um, we and we can show it to you when we do a tour outside, we have a 100 watt uh, electrical um, solar panel from Harbor Freight Tools. And, uh, and that came with this little charger. That's what this is here. And it, it looks a little overwhelming at first, but it's really not. Um, I learned all this stuff online uh, pretty quick on, on YouTube and so forth. Um, throughout the summer, we were able to have the 100 watt solar panel um, the, and it came with this charging uh, controller and then it came with a few lights. And uh, so basically all you do is just put these little clips on it and, uh, and it would charge it automatically and it was, it, was, it was charging way more than we were using throughout the summer because you have long days, lots of sun, and we weren't really needing anything else. Um, this winter, uh, we have much shorter days and uh, now we have a, a grow light in here that, which takes a little more energy. Um, so we needed to uh, provide a little uh, more uh, backup for that. So what we ended up doing is we added three more batteries and uh, we did have them all hooked together at first, but it didn't really give us uh, an emergency at the uh, supply at the end. So what we ended up doing is we would use the batteries and it would go down to zero and then we were kind of disappointed because it would, it would do it at inconvenient times. So what we have found for us um, is it actually worked better to just leave them separate or these are not expensive batteries or anything like that It would have been nice if we would have you know gotten much much more expensive batteries and things But um, but these these, these work fine for us and, and learning what we're doing um, our, our solar panel was hundred and fifty dollars. These are about a hundred to hundred and thirty dollars each um, So so not real expensive and then we bought a uh, generator uh, this fall and uh, so we have a Generac uh, generator outside. It's uh, 3,250 uh, watts, if anyone cares. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then we have four of these. Um, and again, this was just a Walmart purchase. It's a marine or deep cycle battery charger. And, uh, and we got four um, after a while. We started with one and then uh, went to four. And um, th these have worked really, really well. They're, they're inexpensive. And uh, I think uh, I don't know, $30, $40, something like that, probably $40. Um, what we noticed before we mounted this here is that um, our uh, huge dog, she would run by it and she's literally kind of like a bull in a china shop. And she would knock the inverter over, or pull the cables off. <gasps> So what we ended up doing is mounting it here so it's a little more stable and just running the wires behind here again only for St. Bernard protection. Um, but it wasn't really, there's no real reason from, uh, for electrical reason. So, so that might, you might be wondering why we have these huge cables and stuff like that. It's just something we brainstormed up and it was the cheapest way. I think it cost me like $8 um, to make these and, and to hook it up this way. So it was just uh, an easy way to do it. So... Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please ask. Don't ask me no questions, and I won't tell you no lies.